This week, the Motorhead crew raised the roof on a Gladiator. Get the lowdown on undercoating, get hands-on with a hybrid, and clamp down on CV joint problems. Next on Motorhead Garage, presented by Topcoat. Welcome to Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. Well, we got our JK and a Gladiator in the shop. And if you're a Jeep person, the first thing you want to do is take the top off. Well, you also know it took two people. You know that it's time consuming and we have to store it someplace safe. Well, with that said, I'm really afraid to take the top off the Gladiator. What if I told you there was a quick and easy way to take the tops off of both of these vehicles? Well, Dave's got a product that's going to do just that. John, the J-Bar is a super simple design and it's elegant in its simplicity. Brett's one of the designers of it. How did you come up with the inspiration for this? Um, like most, most inventions come from some kind of problem. Um, we had a close family member that had actually purchased a Jeep Wrangler, um, was struggling taking that top off and uh, we came up with this, what we feel is a very, very strong solution um, to that problem. And speaking of strong, it's super stout. What is the J-Bar made of? So the J-Bar is a, it's an all aluminum construction. Every, all the components that you see are actually powder coated. Um, it's the same process that we, we actually use on industrial farm equipment. So it's very, it can stand up to the elements. It can be inside, outside. And then uh, from there, what we do is we make sure that um, when we water jet and we construct the rest of the, the J-Bar itself, um, we take great time and great care in that process. And the design is, is terrific. How do we know we're getting a quality product from J-Bar? We actually make everything uh, locally in Gibson City, Illinois. So we manufacture everything in-house. And again, we take an enormous amount of pride in everything that we ship out our door. That's great. And you pay special attention to detail. I notice you even send the small parts like the little wing nuts that you need, which are an integral part of the installation. And John's going to show us how that works. Well, we got our target tops off. I got the J-Bar lowered down. Everything laid out and ready to go. We even dropped the front windshield down. You don't have to do that to take the top off. We're just a curious bunch here at Motorhead Garage. Hey, Brett, you give me a hand. I got actually six bolts around here. I got them all out. These are little Torx heads. I got two left. Super easy. Now, Brett, this is a one-man job, but I'm a little lazy. I don't want to walk all the way around there. What do you got over there? Yep, all we need to do here is just disconnect the power, right? and then we'll move straight to the top. Well, let's go to the top. There was yep. two bolts up there. I already got them loose, so it shouldn't be a big deal. When I took the target top off, you can see these two Torx heads right here. Just a matter of pulling them out. Once we get that out, we're going to have to go back down and do the lower strap, or are we doing this one? We'll do this first one here. Perfect. Yep. So yep. walk me along here. So again, just a, yep, just a pick up here. Okay, and we're taking the bolt through the back way. Yep. Awesome. Got the strap J-Bar provides right here. Perfect. And a wing nut. Yep. You guys provide that as well. Now this has given us our securing point for actually lifting, is it not? Correct, yep. So this will simply um, just use the wing nuts to connect here. Right. And then from there we'll connect the back pieces and move forward. Very cool. All right, so we got it secured. Boy, it's, it's relatively light. It's not bad at all. Yeah, this one's actually quite a bit lighter than the, uh, the Wrangler hardtops. Yeah, not near as heavy. Yeah, I imagine these things work great for the Wrangler. That's a lot heavier. They're working good for this so far. So far, so easy. Now we go down and hit the bottom ones. All right, so I took those bolts. Of, now we're just going to lift up on this one side at a time. Go ahead. You want to do yours first? Yeah, please. Here. Okay. So again, we're just going to pop this up nice and easy. Awesome. And then from underneath here, you're going to put this. Okay. And place this down nice. All right. Perfect. All right. And then what you can do here is if you get a little bit of a gap, Uh huh. Not too much. And Run the strap through. Yep. Okay. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Now, once it comes through, you're going to do that loop again. Yep. You're going to loop around go. here. All right. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you pull this tight here. Okay. Yep, so it's nice and taut. Very good. All right. Now, what's next? Uh, make sure that one there, there's nice and tight there. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Pull it nice and tight through. Got it. And then we'll just go back up top. All right. And then what I like to do, I'd like to take um, here, make sure you get, give yourself some slack right. there in the, in the strap. And these are just basic hasp clips here. We're just going to go ahead and clip yours. Do yours first, and then I'll pull the J-bar a little bit my way. Give me some slack. There yep. we go. There you go. Look at that. All right. Shove it through the strap. 
put the hasp on the back side and our front is good and secure. Same thing on the back? Yep, same thing on the back. Just again, kind of give yourself some wiggle room with the strap there. All right. And then you're going to take it up. No problem. Is that what this cushion's for here? We can put that on the roof? Yep. Okay, put that on the roof there. Get yours, let me know when you get yours and I'll, well, we can pull it all the way back. Same thing as the front, goes through, cliffs, no problem. Get mine Hass, and we're ready to lift this thing. There it goes, pulling a little bit of tension. Up, up and away. Wow. Boy, just that easy. You know what, if you want to use your J-Bar, just go to the website at j-bar.com and check them out. Use your JK or your Gladiator. How is it tended to be used with the top on and off in seconds? We'll be back with more Motorhead Garage presented by Topco. Motorhead Garage presented by Topco is brought to you by Tom's Bronco Parts, the largest inventory around of 66 to 77 Ford Bronco parts and accessories. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. NH Oil Undercoating, the official oil-based rust prevention system. Kicker Performance Audio, living loud. And by Top Coat, don't just coat it, top coat it. You are locked on to Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. And you might have noticed my partner, John Gardner, well, he's not here, he's actually on the road. So let's go check in with him now. Now we're here with Joe from NHOU Protective Coatings. And Joe, you guys are proactive when it comes to that nasty four letter word in the automotive industry. And you don't have to beep it out. We're talking about rust, man. This stuff's nasty. Tell us about how'd you get in this business? So proactive, what we're really dedicated to doing is educating people and trying to get them proactive. The, the challenge for us is more cultural than it is technological. Go in and, and change your oil and, and change your oil in your undercarriage the same way you would your motor. Um, so getting people to think proactively is the biggest challenge for us. Now cars, they've changed. I mean, you know, we saw rust years ago on these older cars. Kind of went away for a little while, but it's coming back. Tell us why. Just like oil changes in service, I want to take care of the rust and the undercoating as well. Right. So, uh, you know, r right now the challenge is, is vehicles, they're going to go 250, 300,000 miles with the engine if you just do regular maintenance. And so what's killing people, at least from the top half of the country up where they're using road brine, is uh, rust. Well, this road brine, this is a sticky situation, especially up here in the Rust Belt. I mean, tell, talk about that a little bit. So road brine is uh, something that the towns are, are using now that they uh, definitely make the roads safer. Um, it's very cost effective, but it comes at a cost. And the cost is corrosion to your vehicle. Um, what they do is they've been very good at liquefying the uh, sodium, and now they add things such as beet juice, magnesium, uh, and, and, and things that help it work at lower temperatures. Um, they get a toxic mix, it works great, makes the road safe, then it washes off. So they now add sticky additives, corn syrup, molasses, so that it sticks to the road. You drive over it, doesn't discriminate, sticks to your vehicle. Many car washes are recycling their water. They do not get the sodium out. You go into the car wash, he's pushing it back up into the body cavities. That's really gonna be the catalyst for the industry being revived. Now you had an older truck and then you got a new truck. You got a product for both. Tell me about the older truck and what did you do to prevent rust with that? So the old truck, you can use oil on a brand new vehicle or a used vehicle, but if you've got pre-existing rust, the only way to work is, is, is with a, an oil-based product because that will actually penetrate through the rust down to the good metal, displace moisture and remove oxygen. Take any of those out of the equation and you don't have oxidation. The oil also now creates a barrier against anything else coming at it, such as the road brine, okay? Um, that oil will also work for you. So when you spray that oil, it'll creep four to six inches up the rocker panels, the door panels. You spray the uh, cross members of a pickup truck bed, they're notorious for rotting out. They're, for one, they're uh, prone to hold moisture, dirt and dust. They're unfinished surfaces. The oil will go in there and creep and migrate into the spot wells, the seams and give you, uh, it'll stop oxidation, give you a barrier against uh, anything, uh, any element that may come at it, such as moisture and road brine and salt. 
Now you had mentioned oil now, it's non-toxic, that's pretty cool, but also, you know, there's a lot of undercoatings out there you just spray on, that's not gonna do the trick. Tell me the difference. Well, most people will try to mask um, rust, so they'll spray over rust, and um, it looks nice for a year or two, but eventually that's gonna fall off because what happens is you trap moisture and oxygen beneath the surface and it continues to grow and then it eventually works its way to the surface and, and what did you accomplish? I mean, you made it look good for a couple of years. Now, that's on an older truck. Let's talk about the new truck. You got a new truck. I wouldn't think about undercoating it. The manufacturers are doing a good job, but that's really not the case. Tell me about the new truck. Yep, so really you wanna, you wanna protect any vehicle. Now, oil is gonna be the most forgiving approach towards pre-existing rust. We have a second option. If you have a brand new truck, we have a wax oil. Wax would look like what you'd consider your conventional undercoating, it's black sprayed on everything that's exposed, everything that we can see, so we get 100% coverage. We use oil inside the body cavities, which is really the critical part of this whole equation. Um, the the uh, wax is uh, not a brittle product like the old, uh, you know, hard asphalt. It is soft, but what the key to all this, this whole, you know, procedure is, no matter what approach you take, is that you be proactive and that you come in every two years on the wax and let us watch the vehicle, babysit it, make sure if there's a breach in that surface that it's addressed before it becomes a big problem. So it's really a maintenance program. Joe, you use the product, you develop the product, but what if I want to get it sprayed on? Do you have some dealers that'll do that? Yep, so not only did we, uh, do we work with our uh, chemist and our corrosion engineer, we are on top of the problem. We use the product. We have about 3,000 vehicles that pass through our shop each year, so we know uh, firsthand how the product performs. Uh, we look for technological advances. Um, we also put a lot of emphasis on factory trained. So an above average product is completely worthless if you get a below average application. If you look on our website, you're gonna find factory train applicators that come into our facility and we go over with them how to use the right equipment and apply the product properly. Um, and that really is the most important part of the whole equation. Well, Joe, I mean, we sure appreciate you having us out here in New Hampshire. You got an awesome facility. It looks great. You're doing a great service to $23 billion worth of rust out there. We can slow it down. But you know, stay with us. We're going to be back in the studio with plenty more Motorhead Garage right after this break. Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. We've been hearing the terms hybrid and electric vehicles, and you know it's a bit of a shock to realize the Prius was released in 2001. That means you'll be driving around with a classic tag in no time. Well, with hybrid vehicles, just like any other vehicles, parts wear out, and a major concern is the battery pack. They can range anywhere from $5,000 to $10,000. Really not too cost effective with the car, not till now. RockAuto.com has hybrid batteries. Check it out, we'll go to their website, We'll click on actual hybrid battery section here and it pulls up. Electric gas with the hybrid, there's the battery pack itself and it's only $1,300 at rockauto.com. You're not even gonna get that anywhere else except rockauto.com or the dealer and you're gonna pay a lot more. So check it out. Now, you know, you can spend $160, you can save that a year and in 10 years, you're actually gonna save up enough to have a battery, kind of makes a hybrid a viable choice. Another important component of the hybrid is the electric cooling fan, not for the engine, but for the hybrid batteries itself, usually located on the deck of the car. And I can click on it right here. They also carry that. You wanna make sure that's running and it's in good shape so you can keep the long life of the batteries nice, that it's not gonna have any premature failure. And there it is right there. There's a 2010 with the electric gas, which is a hybrid battery cooling fan, a little bit different. Make sure your batteries are cool. Make sure they're gonna last a long time. Now, last but not least, if you're not sure, we can actually click right here. RockAuto.com carries catalogs. We actually have a catalog for your vehicle. You can see the actual Honda Accord one right there. This one happens to be the Toyota Prius. It's got the Toyota on there. It actually has it in written form or DVD form. So all the parts you ever need at the right price, right at RockAuto.com. Time now for Top Coats Tips and Techniques. You know, one of the aspects when it comes to boats is bimini tops. 
Bimini tops, but also isinglass. And isinglass and bimini tops go hand in hand. And the whole reason behind this is for protection. It's to protect you from the sun, it's to protect you from the elements. But when it really comes down to it, what do you use to protect your isinglass? Well, F11 is designed to do just that. It's a go-to, it's a must product when it comes to isinglass. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So over here, we've got this beautiful helm and it's completely enclosed in this bimini top and isinglass. Well, obviously, you know, you get in some serious weather, you need to be able to see exactly what's going on out there. All the rain, you want it to dissipate, you want it to be extremely hydrophobic. So this has to be extremely clear, right? Well, F11 is perfect. Watch how easy this is. All you have to do with F11 is literally just mist it on and you do it on the outside, you do it on the inside, but you take your microfiber towel, just like you would say paint or the gel coat, and you literally just start buffing it into the surface. And again, remember, you always flip to your dry portion to do your final buff. But look at those results. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. It has the easy release non-stick coating characteristics, so it sheds the water quickly, extremely hydrophobic, but it also helps protect it from the harmful UV damage of the sun. Not only does it do the isinglass, but your acrylics and so forth, just like on this boat, from acrylic panels, isinglass, even your bimini top. So if you want to learn more, you can always go to our website at topcoat.tv. To get the best engine performance, drivability, and fuel economy, change your air filter. Real simple to do. On our Malibu here, man, nothing more than just coming around, pulling these two screws out, and I'm going to pull these two out. But I want you to check a couple things while you're doing your vehicle. Look around, make sure there's no vacuum hoses plugged into the air box here. Ours actually has a mass airflow sensor located right there, and uh, the box is okay. I don't have to pull the air ducting out. I'm pretty sure I can just pull this up right here and sneak it out of there, which is pretty cool. Now, if you look at this air filter here, it actually doesn't look too bad, but I got a pretty cool trick for you. If I take this light and I shine it through there, on the dirty spot you can see it gets a little brighter, but it, oh, it looks pretty good, but check this out. Here's the new one versus the old one. So you can see it really shine through that one all the way across, no problem. That makes all the difference in the world. Now, to put it back in, just reverse the procedure. I'm gonna tuck it back in there pretty nicely, get, make sure it's all seated. Once I do that, come back, put the earbox in, the clips back there, pop it down, secure it, re-secure the screws, you'll be good to go. Make sure your air filter is nice and clean, don't have any lean conditions or problems, get the best drivability out of your vehicle. Motorhead Garage, presented by Top Coat, is brought to you by Muldoon's Diesel Performance, your headquarters for Dodge Diesel Performance and Repair. Rust Release, the safe industrial strength rust remover that works. Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Soft Sanders, the flexible sanding blocks. And by Studley's Independent Rods, street rod suspension and components. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage, presented by Top Coat. Well, I'm sitting here holding this drive axle, but the problem is the clamp popped off right here. Now this thing has grease in here, it's gonna come out. If you replace it, it could be a $300, $400, $500 drive axle. We don't wanna do that. I wish there was a way that we could make a perfect seal around here, make sure that's tight and strong, and not affect the balance of it. Ooh, I have the perfect idea. Dave's over with Clamp Tight. Yeah, John, clamp tight can do all sorts of things. As you can see, there's different tools, different gauges of wire, and all sorts of uses. But Nikki, you've been getting a lot of calls and emails from folks that specifically are using clamp tight on their CV boots. Uh, what can clamp tight do that's better than the traditional clamps? It's a round wire applying even pressure. It's a true 360 degree seal, so it's not going to cut in. Doesn't have those edges on there. Also, everything goes where it's supposed to go. You know, so it's not getting up underneath that clamp and finding an escape route out. So that's why it's so much better. Air can be very sneaky and with the, with the traditional clamp, they can slide and vibrate loose when you're going down the road you know, through the years and everything and clamp yep. tight won't do that. Absolutely not. So it, it's super easy to put on. Show us how it works. You got it. So take your wire, bring your ends together, make a loop, feed your ends through the loop. Now one time through is great if you're attaching header wrap or just anything you're running pressure though, you want to go through two times. So we're going to go the exact same way around, up through the center, go through make sure you're not crossed or twisted so you have a nice even seal. Attach the tool, take the nose, push it right under the loop, wrap it up and around, 
each of the pegs, twist it together just like a bread tie. There's a little notch at the bottom of the tool. That loop that we made earlier is just gonna pop right in there. This is your push, this is your pull, and you just start tightening it down. So, like I said, the great thing is it's not twisting the wires together, so it's not gonna heat it up like safety wire pliers, and that wire's not gonna break. It's also a round wire and you're applying even pressure. It's not gonna cut into anything you're working on. You're gonna feel it in the tool, just like a hose clamp, just like a screwdriver on a hose clamp starts getting tight. You're feeling it in the tool. You can also see it, it's actually starting to bite. If I had a barbed fitting, I'd actually see that barb starting to bulge through there. 100% attachment, it's a true 360 degree seal. I'm gonna keep turning. If it feels tight, go a little bit more just to really cinch that down. It's getting nice and flush, ready to finish it. If I have the overhead, all the way over. Loosen the nut, pull the tool away, cut about a quarter of an inch, that's your clamp. If you're in a tight space, just past 90 is all you need. Take your cutters. Cut the wire on both sides, tool drops away. Tabs are a little long, I'm just gonna trim those up, push them down, and that is your finished hose clamp. And that's how it works in theory. Let's see how it works in practice over at the truck. Sounds good. Kevin, very common problem here. The boot rips, you get the fluid out of there. We have a problem. You got a way to fix it, man. Get to work. Absolutely. So I've already wrapped my wire around twice, like they were showing you over there. Just gonna stick the nose of my tool in, wrap it over both of my pins, and we're gonna twist that together. Now you make sure you're in that notch. That's what helps tighten everything all up. And then once we start tightening that up, nice even pressure all the way around. So take a second to get it nice and tight. I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it all the way over. There you go. Man, look at that, you gotta love that. Now we're just gonna trim that up a little bit. And then once we press that down, that's what's going to hold it all in place. Now think about that for a minute. I mean, you have a couple of options with an axle. I mean, you can buy the whole thing, which is astronomically costly. They sew a little boot like this, but once again, Kev, you got to pull this whole thing apart, put it back on there, hope it goes back together. Not going to work as well. Absolutely. And even the manufacturer gives you a clamp like that. Well, guess what? You need a special tool for this. I mean, why not buy a multi-tool that you can do a billion things with instead of just this, and you're going to have to use it one time. Right. Well, check them out on the web. Get one for yourself. You can fix CV axles and so much more. We're out of time for today, but if you got a cool product you want to get on Motorhead Garage, just email Jeff at masterstv.com. We'll see you next week with more Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat.